This is two strings of addressable LED signage pixels. And the set on the left is equipped with four wires, um, five volt, negative supply, there's zero volt, um, and data and clock. And I bought these a while back, believing them to be WS2801 chips. However, it turns out the supplier had been slightly misleading. And the only way I could actually find out, I, had, I had actually got a controller for them, for the WS2801s, and it didn't work, it just random flashing and flickering of colours. The only way I could find out what chip was in it was to take a knife and scrape and gouge away through the plastic until I got to the chip, cleaned all the sticky goop off the chip and found it was a UCS5903. And it seems that's a very common chip um, of the earlier um, addressable LED pixels. And, and it's very similar to the D705 and probably the LPD6803. And it basically it's, it acts like a shift register along the LEDs with just five byte, five bits, should I say, for each colour, red, green and blue. So not super high resolution. Um, then it comes the newer chips based on the WS2811, um, also used, uh, th that chip's available in LEDs called WS2812. And it's quite clever, it's 3 wire, it's 5 volt, 0 volt and data. And the data is just a quite a strict timing tolerance and once you've started sending data out to this string you kind of can't stop, it's quite demanding, uh, it wants all the data at once. So um, you send out a series of um, logic transitions uh, where a short uh, one is going to be a zero and a long one is going to be a... Um, or should I say a short high state is going to be a zero, short high state is going to be a one, I think is how these do it. And they basically just act as a shift register where the first LED in the string receives its information and then passes the information on to the next one, which then takes its information and then on to the next one. And they're all synchronised, they, they store it in their shift register but don't put it out to the LEDs until they get uh, the sort of end of packets of delay and then they all go out simultaneously so it's quite clever but as I say very demanding so these ones I kind of gave up on because um, it's uh, there really isn't much data available on them but um, I'll probably revisit them someday although the 5 bit resolution is a bit disappointing so I'll get them out of the way and these ones I got this tiny little inline controller for them for just a few quid on eBay just to try them out so when I power it up with 5 volts they do this rather attractive spectral colour chasing effect. It's quite nice. Which is good because it's the only decent effect in the thing. Because um, uh, they've really used a small controller in here and because the timing is so demanding, um, I, I originally wanted to write a bit of software for something like a PIC-12 microcontroller that would do really complex effects by generating the colours in real time using algorithms. And it's quite hard because um, it really does demand the data at a very high speed that if you're bit bashing it, that virtually eats the full capacity of the processor. It really is very demanding. So um, this uh, little controller here has various effects. It's got three buttons. They kind of, they make, it looks like the buttons are in the front because it's marked in the front, but there are actually little recessed buttons here. And you can step through various effects, most of which are absolutely terrible. And, you know, you get banks of effects that it's just the same effect with a different colour, which is reasonable enough, and most of them are just really designed for the minimum software required to actually squeeze an effect out. And it's notable that uh, this is a string of 50 pixels, but it only seems to control up to 30 and then it echoes on after that, except in the sort of that smooth colour transition effect. Um, so, not, you know, I quite like that uh, effect the one with the color uh, sweeping color transitions but uh, that's really about it the other ones are just not really inspired at all they're just basically packers just to make it look like it's got lots of effects but anyway let's uh, take this to bits and see what's inside it It's quite neat. It's uh, just done the style of the little mini RGB controllers and amplifiers that the wires are just going in. Uh, I'll, I shall move this where people can actually see it. Let's see if I can not. 
uh, slice right through something crucial including me Well, that is impressive. It's a little, uh, it's a little eight-pin microcontroller. Very little circuitry in this. Very little circuitry in it indeed. The three buttons, a little bit of support circuitry, and the microcontroller. So let's. Uh, it, it does have a number on the microcontroller. Let's take a look at that and see what number it has. It's tiny as usual. So let's get the microscope into it. I might even put the light on the microscope so I can actually see something. It is... Ah! I, I had it and I've lost again. 16F105W? 16, is that a 16 or a 15? It's very hard to tell. It's one of those laser... It's, it's, I think it's 16F105W. I shall note that down. 16F105W. I wonder if that's a, a variant of the PIC 16? I'm not 100% sure. There, there is other information on it. The, chip underneath but it's uh, I think it's just manufacturing and it's so they've jammed so much text that it's all just merged into each the characters have actually all just squished into each other so I, I can't actually read that I think it says HBH 482C8 but I'm not really sure oh and above it it says LAP or is that IAP? It's really very small. And it's, it looks like their logo because it's, well, it might be their logo or it's just the fact they've squished it to get it in. So that's quite an interesting little thing, actually. I'm surprised it's uh, just a little apron microcontroller. And I'm guessing that the that is the reason they've limited the effects in this because um, it would be quite hard um, to have enough processing capacity to generate quite complex patterns and put the data out at the same time. This board also has a clock pin, so I'm guessing this has also been designed for the WS2801 type chips. And it looks even as if they've got um, components to support that pin. So I think this might just be a universal um, board. Also, I think um, there's what could be a little voltage um, regulator facility at this end to allow it for use with higher voltages so it can drive a 5 volt supply. Yeah, that's quite neat. Quite neat indeed. Yeah, so um, there'll be interest to play about with, but um, there is a newer chip. Um, Julian Illett mentioned it recently, I'm pretty sure. And um, he was, I, I think I looked it up on the internet, and it's quite readily available. And it's going back to the four-wire option where you've got the data and the clock. But um, it means that you can actually, you know, the processor doesn't have to be running so quickly to be able to actually get the data out. It can actually have time to process. Although, having said that, you'd have to have quite simple patterns, or should I say, not simple patterns, but slow-moving patterns, because the slower you process the data and the slower you put it out, uh, the longer it will take to refresh an entire frame of LEDs. But I kind of like the idea of the microcontroller that can... Um, that can run about a thousand of these or something like that. You know, it can just do a, a, a has the capacity to run a huge string with lots of very random and continuously changing effects over it uh, generated in real time. But yes, interesting little toys and very affordable as well these days. All, all good, all good for the electronic toy box.